Welcome to the Burnout Out to Lit Up podcast. I am your host, Erica Del Pozo, occupational therapist, certified health coach, CEO and founder of Joy Energy Time, Miami Girl, and Pineapple Lover. In this podcast, we provide the resources on how to deal with stress, burnout, and anxiety, how to get energized, find true satisfaction and alignment in your life, and more. You will learn how to slay your burnout beast and go from burnt out to a lit up life. Let's do this. Welcome to episode two of the Burnt Out to Lit Up podcast. Today, I will be talking about the difference between stress and burnout and what constitutes as burnout. If you use the two interchangeably, don't really have a good understanding of what burnout is or how burnout and stress can interfere with your life, then this episode is definitely for you. Before we get started, I'd like to start a little podcast ritual and start each podcast with a funny quote, fun fact, mantra, whatever, just something funny or inspirational. So today's quote is, be a warrior and not a worrier. Okay, so be a warrior like a fighter, and don't be a warrior, like someone that worries, duh. (laughs) Okay, I'm just making sure that you can understand what I'm saying because sometimes my Miami accent is a little bit hard to understand. All right, with that being said, let's dive into today's topic. So let's begin by defining burnout. Burnout, in a nutshell, is a constant depletion of mental, physical, and emotional energy without expected or real needs being met. Burnout is a gradual process that builds up over time, and sometimes you don't even know you're in it. It can be caused by a mismatch between work and person to some degree, which leads to outcomes of disrupted work performance and personal factors. The personal factors can include stress, depression, fatigue, whereas work performance can include your time management and work ability. So burnout affects both areas, and it it includes three basic dimensions. Overwhelming exhaustion, which includes what I mentioned earlier with the depletion of your mental, physical, emotional energy, feelings of cynicism and detachment from your job, and a sense of ineffectiveness and lack of accomplishment. The best way I can describe burnout is it's that pit in your stomach of constant dread. It becomes about when too much of your life is draining and not enough is fulfilling, then a sense of hopelessness can take over. Burnout is not the same as depression because burnout is associated with work and depression can be independent of work. And burnout is also not the same as exhaustion or else it'd just be called exhaustion. It includes the other dimensions of cynicism and decreased self-efficacy or feelings of accomplishment. All right, it's story time. So I have to share with you my experience with burnout. One of my very first experiences with it was in my last internship of grad school. My first real encounter, like I said. So I woke up at 6.30 every morning, got ready for my internship. I made it there 20 to 30 minutes early, like a good student, to get ready for a full day of case, a full caseload, a full day. And I would have an incredibly demanding day where I was literally nitpicked and pulled apart by my clinical instructor. And... Not in a very constructive way, to be honest. I would leave the clinic around five or six, go home, eat a quick dinner so I can spend the rest of my evening writing up treatment plans in depth for every single patient. And I had to send them 48 hours in advance, email them to my instructor for my treatment plans to get approved, and I would finally make it to bed by 11-ish or closer to midnight. So this was for about three months, and I know you're supposed to work hard during your internships. It's not about that. I mean, I knew they weren't going to be a walk in the park by any means, and it's a really important part so you can learn before you graduate and get out in the real world. But my experience at this particular outpatient clinic wasn't the most positive. Um, The energy just in the building 
gave me the, I don't know how to say it, just gave me the ickies inside because every time I walked in, I just got these bad vibes and I knew every day, like it was just going to be emotionally difficult. I would FaceTime with my husband at the time who was just my boyfriend because we did our internships in different states. So when I spoke with him, I was usually filled with dread, fear, hopelessness, and I was exhausted all the time. There were several calls where I just cried because the internship was literally felt like the longest three months of my life. The stress got to me so quickly that by the middle of it, I could describe myself as just went from stress to burnout. The negative effects of burnout can spill into every area of your life, including your home, your work, and social life. Burnout carries a significant weight of hopelessness and powerlessness. Burnout can also cause long-term changes in your body that make you vulnerable to colds and flu and other sicknesses. So are you experiencing any of those symptoms? Are you experiencing low energy, muscle tension, headaches, digestive disorders, frequent colds, or changes in sleep patterns? Mental symptoms can include feeling inadequate, overwhelmed, you've lost meaning, you're bored, frustrated, sad, irritable, unappreciated, or my favorite one, feeling trapped. The outcomes of these symptoms can lead to withdrawal. Oh God, I can't say that. Can lead to withdrawal. I'm trying too hard. Withdrawal, (laughs) increased sick days. I told you I have a weird Miami accent. Presenteeism, accidents, crying or increased use of alcohol or food to self-soothe. During my internship, I knew, okay, I need to maintain my health. I need to keep working out and keep cooking healthy. But I also knew that I couldn't do it because that would take away from the time I needed to write up these endless amount of treatment plans. So I did, I did feel helpless and I felt trapped. I developed extreme amounts of muscle tension in my upper shoulders, especially in my dominant hand to the point where I had to go to a physical therapist and the amount of tension in my shoulder, particularly my trapezius, was so painful. I felt like I was carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. I was so stressed. And due to the very little personal time I had during this whole internship, I was getting takeout. I didn't have time even to cook a simple meal. Um, I worked out probably once, or if I was lucky, twice a week. But um, I was just so overwhelmed that I dreaded Sunday nights. Like, I didn't want to go to sleep. I would stay up watching Walking Dead and even Talking Dead. I think that's what it's called. I just avoided going to sleep. And I knew, okay, I just have to get through. It's only three months. I can get through. I can do this. But I put everything, everything in it. Because I didn't want to give them a reason to ever think I wasn't giving 100%. And I just knew this was going to be a difficult time. But actually, the internship I had before this one, I did not feel burnt out. It was totally different. It didn't impact my quality of life. I mean, I was stressed in my first internship, but it was positive. I had a positive experience and I learned a lot and I felt safe. I felt safe with my clinical instructor. But in my last internship, I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel like I can trust anyone. So... You can definitely be stressed but not burnt out, but if you're burnt out, it's a result of unrelenting stress. Stress is not a disorder in and of itself, whereas burnout is, and that's why there is such a thing as burnout syndrome. Okay, the physiology of stress is a lot and too much for me to go into here, but I will say that prolonged stress in our bodies keeps our brains on high alert. When the body is stressed, the sympathetic nervous system generates what is known as the fight or flight response. We're all familiar with that, right? The body shifts all of its energy resources towards fighting off a life threat or fleeing from an enemy. The nervous system signals the adrenal glands to release hormones called adrenaline and cortisol. Stress signals from the hypothalamus, a part of our brain, causes the adrenal cortex to produce cortisol and the adrenal medulla to produce adrenaline. 
This starts the process that gives your body the energy to run from danger if need be. And these hormones cause the heart to beat faster, respiration rate to increase, blood vessels in the arms and legs to dilate, digestive uh, processes change, and your glucose levels in the bloodstream increase to deal with the emergency. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine all of this happening over and over again over a prolonged period of time? Experiencing stressors over a prolonged period of time can result in a long-term drain on the body. Duh, right? It sounds terrible. As the sympathetic nervous system continues to trigger these physical reactions, it causes a wear and tear on the body. It's really not so much what chronic stress does to the nervous system, but what continuous activation of it does to other bodily symptoms, and then that becomes the issue. Stress can involve a sense of urgency and hyperactivity, being overengaged and overactive, and more physical consequences, whereas burnout aligns more with disengagement. You're just over it. It's a sense of helplessness, hopelessness, feelings of detachment, and more of the emotional consequences. Stress increases our need to respond to whatever it is that's stressing us out, and that can create anxiety in the process. But in burnout, after dealing with so much stress, we just kind of stop responding. We respond less to the things that are stressing us out, which can lead to depression. Since chronic stress can lead to burnout, Stress management techniques can sometimes be helpful in managing burnout, like meditating, deep breathing, spa days, exercise, etc. All the good stuff. But that's only if we can get ourselves to actually do them, which is the challenge, right? We may know what to do. Okay, yes, easier said than done. And tell ourselves that we're going to do it, but we just don't. Having the motivation to do it or perceiving that you don't have time to do it, that can be really frustrating. Was this episode helpful for you? Are you struggling with stress and burnout and finding solid solutions that fit into your life so that you can restore your happiness and slay your stress or burnout beast? Yes, my friends, it's time to slay your beast. We all have a beast to slay. It is slay time. Okay, you get it. So imagine if you could live a satisfying life with a game plan and learn how to implement strategies for an aligned life. A life where you're in control of stress and burnout by adding in some evidence-based interventions like play. This episode is brought to you by my online mini course, Revamp Your Joy, and it's a perfect jumpstart for looking at not just the what, but the how. How to protect your mental energy and actually learn about the surprising things that drain you throughout the day. The things I experience firsthand. It's such a fun mini course because I teach you how to explore the impact of play and concepts of flow. How to find the occupations that add flow into your life how to tackle your Sunday night scaries so you can live a life in peace, set boundaries in your life to maximize your joy and decrease the stress signals in your brain, find your just right challenge, how to put that into action so that you cannot suffer from yet another unsuccessful New Year's resolution, but have a real approach and plenty more. It's a big, big bang for your buck And if you're ready to do something about your stress and burnout in a seriously fun, refreshing way, then Revamp Your Joy is a perfect fit for you. You can visit joyenergytime.com and go to the courses tab, then go to mini courses and you will see Revamp Your Joy there. Information for Revamp Your Joy is also in the show notes at joyenergytime.com. Thanks for listening. If you want more, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Also, share this episode with your friends, and I would be so grateful. If you feel inspired, leave a review on iTunes with an honest comment and or what you'd like to hear more of so you can help me out on my journey in delivering meaningful content. Thanks, mis amores.